Hi there, this is Sandra from the Schwoben's Nest. Welcome to my Holly Jolly Christmas series. My first trash to treasure today is using this old coffee can. I'm taking a chip brush and some white chalk paint and I'm just going to give it a couple of coats to cover it up. If there's some of the metal showing through, that's okay. I want it to be a little bit rustic and not so perfect. The two coats of paint are dry and I've decided to take some of this buffalo check ribbon and just put it around the middle of the can and glue it in place. In order for the candle to stand above the coffee can, I'm using this glass cylinder and I'm just going to glue it down at the bottom of the can. I got these white pine cones at my Dollarama store. They came in sort of like a hanging thing for on your door, but I took them apart and I'm going to hot glue them all the way around the edge of the coffee can. I wanted to add a little bit of festive color, so I'm going to cut off some of these berries and glue them in between the pine cones. To add even more festive color, I'm taking these little holly leaves and just tucking them in between the pine cones all the way around. At the very front of the arrangement, I'm just pinching the ribbon down a little bit so it looks like it's gathered and just holding it there with some hot glue. I love using jingle bells in my displays, so I'm going to take this little piece of holly and tuck the jingle bell into the branch, hot glue it, and then glue it right into place on top of the ribbon. Here's how this inexpensive project turned out. The second Trash to Treasure project is using these corks. I'm going to cut them in half using this little junior hacksaw. It's a really fun tool. It's super sharp. And I'm just using some pliers to hold the cork in place because they're just a little bit wiggly and I don't want to get my hands too close to that blade. When you're using corks, you're going to want to make sure that you soak them in some water for at least 10 minutes. I did mine actually for a couple of hours and then I drained out the water, but I kept them covered in a plastic container as you can see here and I put the lid on it and that keeps them nice and moist, prevents them from crumbling and breaking as you're working with them. Next, I'm cutting out a little piece of wood from this garden stake and I'm using my miter shears. This is a new purchase for me. I love these. They're so handy and they, you just have to squeeze it and it just pops off super sharp and you can do all sorts of different angles with that. I will have a link for that down in my description box. I'm just going to hot glue that little piece of wood to the front of this birdhouse and it will become the door. I'm going to start hot gluing the half corks onto the side, back and front of the birdhouse and this will create the effect of a log cabin. Now these corks do have different writing and dates on them and things like that, but I think it's going to add to the character of this piece. These corks were given to me by Andrew and Chelsea who are part of my extended family and the owners of Happy Dog Homestead. I would love for you to go over to Instagram and follow them. You're going to see some beautiful pictures. Chelsea's an amazing photographer. Their chickens have just started laying some eggs and they have some gorgeous dogs that pose so beautifully for all of the pictures that Chelsea takes. And you'll see some exciting adventures for their canoe camping. I'll have the link to their Instagram and their blog down in my description box. I'll be using those miter shears again to make some smaller cuts to fit the corks all around the door and at the peak of the roof. 
The log cabin portion is finished, but now it needs a roof. I'm using some large popsicle sticks and I've used the miter shears just to cut them in different lengths because I want this to look like shingles on a roof. I'm gonna use hot glue to attach them and go all the way up to the peak. The roof is almost complete. I just need to add a couple of longer strips to cover up the very top. For the trim pieces on the door, I used a large popsicle stick. I cut it in three pieces lengthwise and then measured out how tall I needed these side pieces. And then I'll add three smaller pieces horizontally in the middle. I'm taking some black and brown acrylic paint and a little bit of water to water it down a bit to create somewhat of a painted stain for the roof. So I'm just going to mix these colors together until I get a really nice dark brown and then I'll cover the whole roof with it including the edges and underneath. Using a red oil based paint pen I'm going to give the door a pop of Christmas color. To give it more of an aged and weathered look, I'm going to take the paintbrush that still has a little bit of paint on it from the roof and go over the door. And finally, no log cabin would be complete without a chimney. So I've taken a cork and I've cut it on an angle to fit the roof and I'm just going to hot glue that in place. This will be another perfect addition to my tiered tray decor items. The last project that I have for you today is using an old jar. This happens to be a salsa jar. And this is a piece of fabric that I got at Walmart. I believe they're called Fat Quarters. They're 18 inches by 18 inches and it's this beautiful red buffalo check. I've measured out what I need and it's just enough to go from the top ridge to the bottom ridge on the jar and then all the way around the jar. Now, one thing I wanna mention here is I've got my fabric scissors that I'm using. It's really important when you are crafting to have the appropriate tools for the job. I don't ever use regular scissors on fabric because it ends up being really choppy and they just aren't sharp enough. So these fabric scissors I use only for material, nothing else. My piece of fabric is now cut and I want to make sure that when I fold it over I'm going to come together on exactly the same seam. So this is going to work out perfectly. I've cut it exactly how I need it and then that seam will actually just disappear. Before I attach the fabric to the jar, I wanted to do a little bit something different. I'm taking a tiny little piece of cardstock and I'm just going to freehand a little Christmas tree that I'm going to cut out and use as a template. I'm going to trace out the Christmas tree on each of the four black squares that are right in the middle of the fabric. I'm going to just use a fine tip marker and make sure that I trace out on the wrong side of the fabric. So here I am using these tiny little scissors to cut out these tiny little trees. It's again really important to have the proper tools. You can find these types of scissors in the manicure aisle. They are actually a little pair of nail scissors. They're super sharp and they're perfect for tiny little detailed cutting like this. I'm using Mod Podge to put the fabric on the jar and I'm also going to spritz down the fabric with a little bit of water to make it a little easier to work with. Since the Mod Podge is wet and the fabric will be wet, then I'll have a lot more time to work with the fabric and make sure it's on properly. If I leave the fabric dry, it's going to stick really quickly and absorb the Mod Podge and I won't have any working time. Now I can take my time working out any of the bubbles, moving the fabric around if I need to, and making sure that everything is stuck properly before it dries. 
I'm also using a little cloth just to dab off the excess Mod Podge where the Christmas tree is, but that's going to leave sort of a film on the glass which ends up looking really cute at the end. When you get around to the end piece, you want to just put a thin layer of Mod Podge right on top of the fabric that's already there. Again, spritz your fabric and then lay it down and make sure it's nice and straight. To make the jar look a little bit more finished, I'm going to use a couple layers of twine on the top and the bottom where the fabric ends. I'll just secure that with hot glue a few times around. I'm going to be adding a little bit of greenery and some frosted pine cones from the Dollar Tree to make this look a little bit more festive. The jar looks pretty cute on its own, but I decided to add some Epsom salts into the bottom portion of it just to make it look like snow. And then I'm going to add a tea light. I hope you enjoyed these Trash to Treasure projects. If you did, I'd love for you to stick around a while. Hit that subscribe button. Those two black arrows will show you exactly where to click. Thank you so much for watching and for your support. See you in the next one.